Climate change tops the environmental agenda at present. We all know that every additional person will need to use some carbon energy, if only for firewood for cooking, and will therefore create more carbon dioxide. Though, of course, a rich person will produce vastly more than a poor one. Similarly, we can all see that every extra person is or will an extra victim of climate change. Though the poor will undoubtedly suffer more than the rich. Here at the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, they're working hard to make insects an acceptable food source all over the world. I've come to meet Patrick Durst, the champion of the bug-eating movement. Have some insects here you might want to take a look at, uh, some that are just from the locally available vendors. They don't Not look crickets. any more pleasant after they've been cooked, do they? they... Well, it kind of depends on what you get used to. I, uh, yeah, I, absolutely. I don't... Corn worms, they're still alive. Mmm, extraordinary. Mmm, very moist, chewy. Can't quite describe the flavor, but <laughs> let's try this. Two billion people in the world eat bugs. I'm one of them. Here we have. Oh, crickets. Uh, 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 it's incredibly comfortable. Now, what is this? This looks like I could make cocoa with this. What is? Right. What is that? Well, uh, that's an insect-based premium protein. It's made from Molitor, which is mealworm larvae. Uh, the company is called Insect. This is Infras. This is for fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And as you have there. This is a powder derived from the mealworm and it's a insect protein just been approved by the EU for human consumption. You're not just getting me to eat dirt, are you? <laughs> no, man, I wouldn't play you, bro. We're like one, we're like one entity now. That it is, would be it is, if this is protein, it's essentially tasteless. It's just a protein supplement. Exactly. I can put and this I'm... in a smoothie or something. I'm telling you, yep, and they'll be making all kinds of stuff out of it. And by the way, it is the the, the making of it is severely reducing the the amount of emissions it takes. It is it is a innovation, Justin. We're doing something incorrectly. If we make this switch, it's a huge, huge uh, intervention. It's also forbidden for them to have any opinions about the taste. Food is for sustenance, not pleasure. But it's pretty clear to me that this monk loves my red ant stew. <laughs> no, man, I wouldn't play you, bro. Be watching you. I think bug protein is the future. New initiative could see school children try sustainable insect protein. But is it ethical? asks plant based news. Well, I also wonder if this is ethical. While farmers are being put out of business, intentionally, we've got the World Economic Forum crowd seemingly doing everything they can do to decrease food production. But don't worry, farmers, Bill Gates there to buy up the farmland when you're insolvent on the debt that you've got to repay due to the necessity of taking out loans to stay afloat in this industrial agriculture system. A system that is being vertically integrated by multinational corporations at a pace that even I am surprised at. Is this ethical? But plant-based news isn't wondering if this is ethical for the same reasons I'm wondering. They're wondering if this is ethical for the insects. They say insect farming might be more sustainable, but bugs do have the capacity to feel pain. Those poor little bugs. The UN and World Bank, which are vehicles that assist these multinational corporations and international banks in bringing about the carbon taxing and fertilizer reduction scams in order to save the planet, of course, are saying that global hunger numbers have risen significantly the last year. Isn't it amazing how sustainability and saving the planet track exactly parallel with increased poverty and starvation? Destroying the food supply removing farmers from the land, 
to populating rural areas is the only way that these people are going to be able to actually accomplish getting people, duping people, and eating this dehumanizing slave slop, this powderized industrial cricket kibble being shilled by vapid, zonked out, medicated celebrities and prostitutes almost every day now. And the social engineering has just reached cartoonish levels, like satire can't even match reality now. Somebody on Instagram sent me in a DM uh, this article about Fancy Feast, the Purina Cat Chow brand is making a pop-up restaurant for humans with a menu inspired by cat food. Oh, how delicious. Now, I know this probably sounds great to a lot of you in the audience. You know, we're all just aching to replace our locally produced, easily digested, grass-fed, ruminant animal foods with a very difficult to digest, hard chitin covered cricket ground up into a powder and made into a tasteless kibble. I know a lot of us think this sounds great, but there is an actual dark side to this. These industrial insect production factories that are supposedly such a sustainable and green replacement for locally produced animal foods just happen to be a major vector site for the production of possibly pathogenic parasites. In what seems to be the only major study done on the parasitological load in these industrial insect factories, the study in PLOS-1, a scientific journal, study by Pedro L. Oliveira, titled A Parasitological Evaluation of Edible Insects and Their Role in the Transmission of Parasitic Diseases to Humans and Animals, had some interesting findings. Parasites were detected in 244 out of 300 examined insect farms. That was 81% of the farms with parasites on them. Out of those 81% farms on which parasites were found, 30% of the cases of parasites were potentially pathogenic for humans. But that's just probably nothing. Don't, don't worry about that at all. It's probably fine. Totally fine. Normal. Good. Probably good for you. Probably healthy. Another thing that's quite strange about these philanthropic endeavors to convince us about how great, sustainable, and healthy it is for us to eat these industrial produced bugs is that there is some crucial information that's conspicuously missing from a lot of the PR material. And that's what these supposedly sustainable and healthy insects are being fed. The crickets here eat a mixture of corn, soy, and some flax. Corn, soy, and some flax. Corn, soy, and some flax. On average, the crickets die on almost a thousand pounds of feet a day. There you have it. They're eating a mixture of GMO corn and soy with a little bit of flax. But of course, these companies in their marketing campaigns want you to believe that they're basically dumpster diving behind Whole Foods, right? They're just feeding them scraps that no one else wanted to eat. It's just so sustainable, so far from the truth. If you are going to be scaling the industrial production of any type of food, one of the first things you're thinking about is consistency in your end product, consistency in taste and in the results and the quality of your product. In order to have that, you have to have consistency in feed. These things are eating industrially produced, biotech, patented corn and soy. And we all know these large philanthropic companies like Bayer Monsanto are completely committed to sustainability. And what's more sustainable than Roundup Ready crops fortified with glyphosate? In fact, all the transnational agricultural corporations, biotech companies, chemical manufacturers are all members of the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, working with the United Nations and lobbying for global carbon taxes and the circular economy. Growing all these crickets is still more sustainable than farming pigs, poultry, or cattle. To produce just one kilogram of cow meat takes a staggering 22,000 liters of water and to produce that same amount of protein from a cricket, only a few hundred liters. 
Ah, the inevitable, magical, statistical, moral calculus showing us how much more sustainable crickets are because they require less water per pound of protein. What they're not saying is that in the analysis that they're using, in the analyses that the UN is using to tell us that cows are so bad, look how much water they use to make beef, right? They are using statistics that include all of the rainwater that naturally falls from the sky to water the grass that these animals are eating throughout their entire life cycle. Right? The cows that we have here, they eat nothing but grass. That grass is grown with nothing but water that falls from the sky. But oh my goodness, look how much water it requires for that grass to grow that the cow is then going to eat, turn into a microbial rich fertilizer, right? its droppings, and then if you're managing them properly and moving them properly in a regenerative agriculture system, like many people are moving towards and like people have been doing for so long, you're going to actually create more greenage, deposit more carbon into the soil and produce tons of food with zero pesticides, with zero machines, with no toxic agricultural products, with no biotech necessary. But that's not sustainable, right? What's sustainable is GMO corn and soy fed crickets made in a massive factory for a shelf stable product with a high markup that they can then market to a bunch of gullible dummies. <laughs> no, man, I wouldn't play you, bro. Using cartoons and boxes of kibble that they feed us like little infantilized pets. and the new economic system. The new economic system that we're supposed to just embrace and prostrate before as if it's some sort of a cosmic savior from the original sin of us just being human and breathing our toxic gases and off-gassing our toxic babies that are supposedly just destroying the planet because we're so bad. This new economic model, which is really nothing new, is just as fraudulent, absurd, and goofy as this whole eat the industrially produced soy-fed bugs to save the planet scam. The new economic system in which we will own nothing and be happy is being called the circular economy. Here's Danish politician and young global leader from the World Economic Forum, Ida Alken, who is the author of the article published in Forbes and on the World Economic Forum's website, Welcome to 2030. I own nothing, have no privacy, and life has never been better. Here's Ida Alken running the PR script for this new economic model. That in 2050, we don't even have waste anymore. There will be no waste in 2050. Everything will be seen as a treasure because we will have created what some smart people call a circular economy. I have a friend, he says, every product is a service waiting to happen. Why, why do you want to own your cell phone? I mean, you want, the, you want the function, you want the service, right? Why do you want to own a cell phone if you can just lease it? Why, why shouldn't you lease your refrigerator or your washing machine or your dishwasher? Or why do you want to own it? No, why don't you want to go into a business model where the company owns it? You know what happens when the company owns it? Actually, they can bring down the prices because they don't have to buy new metal and new plastic. So if we start to share things, we can produce much better things that are used much more intensely. Think about a car. Do you know how much a car drives? How much of its life? 4%. 4% is how much a car drives. Or if you take a drill, it's used 15 minutes. And most of us, we I know there are some guys here that really love to own a drill. But for the rest of us, we just want a hole in a wall, right? And, and I think we're going to a place where we just want mobility, where we don't care so much about owning a car. It's actually a little bit of trouble. If, if it just comes a driverless car and pick me up and, and I can drive around and this car will be driving all the time. But now, you know, you rate people, so you don't leave stuff in the car, you just behave better. Basically a rebranding, a mega scaling of a consolidation of manufacturing and production in every aspect of life, including our food supply. It is a centrally planned, vertically in integrated techno bolshevism where we will literally own nothing but it's so green because there'll be no waste we promise it's just a rebrand of recycle reduce and reuse where you will own nothing and the global corporate state will provide us with services in exchange for behavioral compliance they will recycle because we will own nothing including our own trash they will reuse 
and they will reduce our ability to own, produce, or consume anything other than what is shared with us in the sharing economy by these philanthropists. We will be rewarded for sustainability, rewarded for behavior, doled out carbon credits that we can spend on items that comply with the norms of how to be a good global citizen. And if we don't wake up, and push back against this nonsense and support real locally produced animal foods by small family farms and build real local communities. It'll be really difficult to reverse this system once it's been fully implemented. One solution may be to rethink the way we view ownership. What if we never actually owned our technologies? We simply licensed them from the manufacturers. <laughs> no, man, I wouldn't play you, bro. This circular economy is essentially an impossibility. A snake swallowing its own tail. A mythological Ouroboros eating its own snake oil. A magical thinking-induced phantasm. An economic model that dehumanizes us and removes our free will and agency in the world. And the new engineered man in this system is like a GMO soy-fed parasite worm swallowing its own tail. The soy -roboros. I don't know about you, but I'm not planning on owning nothing so I can be happy. And I'm not going to be eating the bugs. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe. Share the video with your friends and family. We'll be watching you. To this distinguished audience, this is a message from the World Economic Forum. We want to ensure that you do not listen to this bigot who will tell you to go to shock.com with the link in the description. Do not click the link in the description. It will bring you to a place where you can get highest quality adaptogens so that you can thrive. But the World Economic Forum would much prefer that you would continue to eat your bugs, live in your cream pod, maintain your social credit score, and do not purchase these products. If you do use the coupon code BIG53LIFE, you will get 53% off all subscriptions for life. Do not get a subscription for 53% off of the highest quality purified shilajit. It is best for you to continue to consume the soy sludge. It is preferable that you continue to drink the tap water, avoid quality food, and do not take chalk highest quality supplements. Thank you very much. The World Economic Forum loves you ever so much.